Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, welcome to the class. Beautiful blouse. <laughs> Maybe, my bit. Yes, hello, hello. So, we are only five people here. By now, yes. Where are the rest of the class? El Salvador is like that, so they come always late. <laughs> El Salvador. Oh, terrible. <laughs> I, uh, no, you know, I love El Salvador. I think it was a very good decision. Uh, 35 years ago, when we decided from Germany to come to El Salvador, I think it was really a good decision uh, for us. Uh, we arrived in El Salvador 1985. Okay. Oh. And it was really complicated in that time, but you know, we have got, uh, we have uh, had uh, got a job and we were young and we have had a lot of opportunity despite the war, despite the war. And therefore, uh, after 35 years, we say that it was a good decision to come here. Very good. So we're very happy to, to have you here with us. Yeah. <laughs> okay, my friends, welcome to the class. We're going to start checking uh, the platform. So remember that tomorrow before before the class, we need to finish uh, the uh, all the unit two, okay? And the midterm test. So this is the class of tonight. Uh, we don't have a homework for tonight, but yes, we need to do the 214. This is a homework where you need to check if it's an effective or not effective presentation. And the second part, also you just need to take what is the correct answer, okay? And remember that we finish that one, we need to go to the next, and you will see there the midterm test. Remember also that after you finish these five questions and submit them, you need to move for, uh, to the part two, right? So there are four parts. This is part two, and then here we have part three, and then here we have part four. And once you finish that one, we're set. It has to be tomorrow in case you have questions. Because remember that on uh, Saturday morning, I send uh, the notes, the grades to Insafor. So we need to finish that one successfully. So that would be, do you have any questions about this? I have already done. <laughs> okay, that's very good, fantastic. Because tomorrow I, I am going to have birthday. Oh, okay. So but that's good that you organize yourself and then you are able to finish that. So also remember that, uh, remember to ask uh, in the company to the human resources department to send the papers for the next level. Uh, we have until June the 12th uh, to do that. So we're going to check about about their attendance. Ada, Patricia, Linares, and Andres. Present, Tisha. Good. Adriana, Stephanie, Martinez, Flores. Alejandra, Michelle, Wilson, Najera. Present, teacher. Good. Ana, Selmi, Chavez. 
present teacher. Good. Edwin Alexander Ayala Erasmo. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdávez. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rubas. Present teacher. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. Good. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Silvia Soleima Rodríguez de González. Present. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Arau. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Good. Perfect. So uh, we are going to check uh, tonight about some. Uh, oh, I see here. Okay. Uh, about how you can evaluate if the presentation is it was good or what you need to to improve when you do some presentation. So uh, yesterday we were speaking about uh, if you had a bad experience about presentation. So tonight we are going to start with. Uh, two videos. The both of the videos are about bad examples of presentations. So let's check into that one, and then uh, let me know uh, if you what what you understood the comments on that one and things like that one. Okay. So let's check the first one. Is this one is a short one. So here we go. Good. For example, I'm now coming to the end of my session on the body. So I need to say something to link this session with the next. So I will say, well, I think that cover more of most of the points about organizing the body. So I'd like to move on to look at how you can introduce your presentation. Okay, we've looked at how you plan how to plan presentation and we've seen that Designing on the presentation's purpose is important. That we also should cons we also should consider our audience and their needs, and the context of or and the context or setting of the talk. And finally, I look briefly at the organization. Okay, I'm going to focus on uh, how you should refer to your presentation and uh, <clears throat> first I will first come with the um, introductions and conclusions and then uh, I will show you the differences of uh, written and spoken English how they affect your presentation and uh, finally I will come to the whistle eggs and uh, body language and how you s use the Q&A section to um, like um, have a effective presentation. So, any questions? Yes. I was wondering what we can do if we get a hard question or a question we can't answer. Oh, that's a hard question. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. And uh, uh, give give a little time to think uh, before you say something. Mm. And uh, just uh, just just say something. Uh, say what you think of. It's okay. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. So it's right. Yeah. Okay. How many errors did you see there? How many mistakes they did? Oh, it was terrible, that example, uh, regarding the body language. <laughs> uh, uh, they, they have any contact. They, uh, okay, the introduction has no, has had no objective, you know, 
to catch the attention of the audience. They have they have not introduced themselves. They have not present an objective. They have not introduced any uh, hook or or something that they can uh, catch the the attention. And it it was really bad uh, not to have eye contact with the audience. You know, there's a reading paper and say so they 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 has they acted like they have a speak with themselves. Okay, very good. So yeah, it's, it although, was although although the boy has intent to present an agenda, although you know, yeah, but it was not enough to make interesting, you know, what they 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 were doing. Very good. So yeah, I believe everything here was not correct. Like every single thing. Any other comment? Uh, any other thing that you saw that was not correct according to what we have checked? I remember teacher when I was a student of primary. <laughs> Remember when teacher said, "Hey, students, tomorrow we are going to to have the uh, the explanation of any topic, uh, the presentation, right?" And I remember my first time. I I I try to not read, not only read, but but uh, but I I I. I try to explain. I remember we have not uh, information, enough information about the topic, but I try to explain that. But uh, I remember the most of uh, classmates, they only read a, a paragraph, but in the uh, <clears throat> don't, don't. Um, Unless memorize, only read. Although uh, the the teacher said, "Don't read. Please explain. Please memorize." But uh, I, I I I see these are uh, those are <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is a uh, uh, younger are are teen teenager? I don't know, but. I, I I remember that when I was a well, for sure it's about about presentation boring the 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 other the other uh, okay the 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 the, the guy is a uh, was in the in the cell phone uh, meanwhile the 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 girl was reading it's a uh, in summary, it's a bad, bad presentation. <laughs> it's a good example, a good example, but of bad presentation. Exactly. How to get boring? How to get boring by presentation? Boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, yeah, that is right. I mean, imagine that this uh, video is just two thirty, and we saw everything that was not correct. Imagine to be in a presentation like that for one hour. I mean that that is painful right so and just a lot of i mean this is exactly what we did when we were um, in sixth grade for example right so because we didn't know many things it was more a joke uh, so it was totally totally good, good. any other uh, any other comments opinions on this yes teacher that that presentation is a, a situation realistic because it's real because uh, now uh, there are uh, students and they don't have uh, skills related to the, a good presentation uh, inclusive the, the high level teacher the, the university or or the uh, the other type degree, 
uh, is, is frequently that the presentation is not, in my opinion, lack preparation. This teacher is uh, because it's very important that the the students feel confidence related to the topic, related to the the comments for um, but is is real teacher is the very real the that that video in only the primary grade teacher. Very true. So uh yeah I believe that this is something that happens right I mean uh, sometimes even at work there are people that they present something like that so um, it's it's not good definitely many mistakes and we need to learn what not to do definitely any other comments or opinion? Well, we, oh, sorry yeah. uh -huh. uh, Rosa. <laughs> Okay, in a few words, it was a really mess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, uh, imagine, imagine the presentation, only one slide, and all the points in only one, and the girl is reading, no, the slide is for a support, but she was reading all the time. The boy was watching the cell, he doesn't pay attention. May imagine, uh, maybe he doesn't pay attention. In, in a moment, maybe the girl needs support and he is looking at that. Oh my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a very, a very true example that the things that we don't, we don't have to do in a presentation. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Imagine, no. It's no, like, but it, ha it happens. It happens like an assembly says. Also at university, sometimes uh, there are groups that I, I didn't prepare nothing. Imagine. But uh -uh, no, it's not the way to, to make uh, the things. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, a lot of things. And you're right. I mean, it's pretty sad because I sometimes I teach at the university. And, 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 and what you said is exactly that one. Sometimes they are like that. Sometimes in third year, fourth year, they cannot do a presentation. So uh, that is not, I mean, you think for yourself, I mean, what is going to happen with this person? Try to look for a job and he has to present something. I mean, this is not difficult. You just present the information in an interesting way. You don't have to spend that much time. I know that depending on the position, probably, yes, you do. To do certain things, but the most basic you need to have. Uh, Wendy. We didn't even prepare the presentation in in the answer of the public or the classmates. Uh, in in the answer, uh, what what do you do you think or what do you think the boys and the girls <laughs> not we did, didn't prepare uh, the answer or the possible answer so that is it uh, yeah a lot of mistakes i believe that yes for example as you say as rose and i say the presentation the slide is i mean it's like a piece of paper that is put there, right? I mean, it's not good. We were saying yesterday the color sometimes and to create, I mean, you need to, you need to mirror that one. Uh, the girl was reading, I mean, not good. You cannot go and read in a presentation. Teacher, mm -hmm. in this moment, critic, 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 oh, the boy, the girl, no, no. Tomorrow, critic one for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're going to watch the video and they're going to say, oh my God. So yeah, a lot of other things that I saw also, is, I mean, look at the position of the boy. I mean, he's presenting and he's like, I don't know, not good, right? 
Uh, also, uh, the other girl disappeared. I mean, I finished goodbye, right? So <laughs> we're not a team it, anymore. Eric, it, it means a slow sheen, eh? You, you have taught, uh, just that you have taught us it. Mm -hmm. A slow sheen. Oh. Yeah. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's, I mean. Not, new word, slow sheen. Yeah. And, uh, well, uh, yes, he was, he tried to say something that he was there, but he didn't explain anything, right? So, uh, like that. Uh, something very curious is when, when somebody asks a question and they were like lost, right? Like, well, you answer, no, you answer, no, I don't know what to say, but say anything, whatever. Ah, okay, I'm going to say it. Very <laughs> bad. That was not good at all. And this, huh? Ah, okay. Yeah, I thought you were going to say something. Uh, okay, another thing that I was interested in this video is about the accent. Right? You see that they uh, are speaking English, but they are kind of Chinese. So uh, yeah, the accent, also you can recognize that it's difficult sometimes. Right? So yeah, we understand, but the accent is, is there, right? You know when a person is. You know, and that is it is a, a big problem when you try to read something you are presenting something and then you read and then you need to be focused that if you read you need so uh, by other means it is so boring you know and the intonation it was really really bad they they have no punctuations and nothing. Yes, it, it, yeah, maybe maybe if you if you have you haven't time to prepare enough, maybe you can use reading as last technique. It's la but you need to put emotion and uh, body uh, the the correct body language, you know. But uh, by other by other means, that is so boring, you know, when you you only read. And you need when you read, you need to put a, you you need to make a eye contact also with people. If you read, if you decide to read, very true. So that is that is very important. I mean, that is uh, not only a presentation, but whenever you read, right, in, in English and Spanish, you need to you need to use intonation. Go up sometimes and go down sometimes. Uh, make the pauses of the commas, the periods. Uh, body language when you're doing something like that. So everything is important. It's very basic and something that it's supposed that we learn that in, in the kindergarten, right? But I mean, we need to practice that one. Probably the main uh, the main reason for that one is because we don't practice. So if we practice and if we listen to ourselves, definitely that is going to help. So, well, not a good presentation, definitely. So this was a total disaster. So uh, we're going to watch another video that is kind of a different example of a bad example. So let's see how it goes. I know, it's still, it's still, it's going to be the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Quadruple checking notes as people file in, getting the computer ready, and asking everyone to take a seat. Pretending to click something on the computer to cover up the fact that I don't know what to do with myself. Arriving just in time. Wrapping up our conversation about a popular TV show we watched last night. <sighs> Disdain for a popular TV show. <clears throat> Mediocre icebreaker joke. That doesn't quite land. Um, attempt to redeem myself by making fun of that guy. <laughs> 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 laughing at that guy. <laughs> laughing because he's laughing and I like him. <laughs> Not laughing and now checking out for the rest of the session. Title, dramatic pause of my presentation. Question about how long this session will last? Annoyed, vague response. Exaggerated eye roll. Poignant quote from unknown philosopher to kick off presentation in dramatic fashion. Juvenile slide transition to spice things up. Reading a long paragraph exactly as it appears on the PowerPoint slide about a shocking statistic I just learned about, followed by all kinds of vague lingo that no one will remember two seconds from now, capped off by 
three bullet points. So. Proudly pause to make sure everyone notices my awesome clip art choice. Out of date pop culture reference. Uh, correction about pop culture reference. Uh, defending pop culture reference by citing social networking site no one uses. Audible side to make sure everyone knows this is a complete waste of my time. Uh, serious and somewhat over the top reminder about how important this information is. <laughs> Uh, uh, unexpected technical difficulty. Embarrassed people can see my desktop background. Snide remark about how Macs are better than PCs. Uh, desperate plea for IT guy. Fixing the problem with an annoyed look on my face so that everyone knows how good at computers I am. Unfunny video I'm really proud of having created myself. <laughs> texting my friend in a way that I think is discreet. Clearly aware of the texting. Prefacing a preface of a preface so that no one really understands the point that I'm prefacing. And now, going through a long list of facts, one by one by one. Asking if anyone has any questions. Reminding everyone there are no bad questions. Hoping if I wait long enough, someone will finally have a question. Concluding by restating the title of my presentation and dismissing everyone. Excited that someone came back for a follow-up conversation. Grabbing pen that I accidentally left. Okay, what did you see here? What <laughs> things have you seen here? It was, it was worst. Okay, Rosalina, go ahead. This guy, oh my God, it's so funny. And nobody it, take the presentation like that. Uh, like a serious presentation because he's a, a clown. <laughs> <laughs> he was a clown. <laughs> Imagine all the problems, the technical problems that he has. No, he, he doesn't prepare good the presentation. And maybe he wants to make a joke, but no, no much. He passed off the, the limit. <laughs> I think everybody was sleeping. The girl was texting, no. Mm -mm. Uh, you can make a joke, but no in that way, I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, the one, the part from the joke, I mean, you need to know if you are good with jokes, right? If you say, no, that is not for me, do another technique. So uh, you just yeah. don't say jokes that are not going to match the, the presentation or the audience, right? He okay, was not yet? funny at all. He was not <laughs> funny at all. And his vocabulary was really complicated. Uh, uh, I didn't understand so much what he was talking about at the, at the first time. No, it, it was really complicated. And uh, I am uh, I am the, the same opinion as Rosa Elena that he he knows he is not funny at all, and then you know this movement. So trying to catch the attention of the people, also uh, it is therefore it is so so important to uh, investigate about your audience. You know, because if you know your audience, maybe you can choose a, a better joke. You know, to start on. But uh, in this case, he was total disorganized. Disorganized? Can, it is uh, right? Disorganized? Uh, the organized. The organized. He was total deorganized because uh, by the technology IT, he was wrong. Also, he he has problem with IT, and he he found so he he was so proud of 
some video he has made by himself, but it, it was no, not funny also. Also, uh, I think we can do better tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a lot of a, a little bit serious, a little bit serious. He has no structure, you know, for the presentation. He has not, he has not introduced an agenda. He has not objective. He, nobody in, uh, no, nobody uh, know it about uh, he want, he was, uh, uh, he is going to speak about. Yeah, so yeah, it, it was a mess. It was different from the other one, but it, it, it was also a mess. He tried, but he tried in a very bad way. Um, a typical one that I saw there is about the the problem, right? He was presenting something else, and he had to call the IT department, uh, and that happens sometimes, but we need to, in advance, you need to try the equipment to check that everything is going to work fine, right? So that is very important. Any other comments or opinion about this video? I shared um I shared my bad comments, teacher, related to that the lack of structure. In my opinion, not necessary in the old presentation is the, is um uh, you need to include a joke, for example, because depend of the audience, depend of your personality, but it's more important that um, always you you must be um, honest in 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 your in your style in your style, but the structure. Is very important, but uh, the structure is how, uh, or, or maybe now there are a lot of tools and you can support uh, for the presentation, for example, the images or specific, uh, specific. Uh, videos or sentence uh, depend on the structure but I I share the my bell comments related to the 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 lack a good structure in the presentation teacher yeah definitely no structure at all and yeah I mean uh, what is interesting is that we checked two different videos on how to fail right and uh, I mean that's why I brought two, because there are different things that we can do or we can avoid to do because, I mean, maybe the first one was very obvious, but on this one, sometimes some people, they act like that. They they think that are funny and we are like, oh my goodness, I didn't understand the job or not presenting irrelevant information or not knowing how to use the equipment, many, many things. So whenever we we deliver a presentation, we need to to check into that one, and we also we need to evaluate. Every time that we do a presentation, we can evaluate ourselves and check if we have done a very good job. And that's what we're going to check about this: how to evaluate our work, our presentation. So I'm going to start with reading. It says, uh, "So how do you evaluate the presenting skills of your people to find out objectively?" where the skill gaps lie? Well, you work out your presentation skills evaluation criteria and then measure, assess your people against them. Okay, so the first part is important because that means that for you to evaluate a presentation as any, as any thing that you are going to evaluate, you need to have a criteria. So you are going to have like a checklist uh, that I'm going to evaluate this and this and this, like what we were saying, the intonation, the punctuation, uh, the slides, if they are understandable, if they don't read. So that is the criteria that we're going to evaluate for. So to help you in this article, we're showing the six crucial questions we believe you need to ask to make a professional assessment 
of your people's presenting skills. We use them in our six point presenting skills assessment checklist. As I was telling you, checklist is very important when you are going to evaluate, which we're giving away as a free download at the end of the blog post. The answers to these questions will allow you to identify the strengths and weaknesses. In example, skills development opportunities of anyone in your team or organization. From the managing director down, you can then put training or coaching in place so that everyone who needs it can learn the skills to deliver business presentation online or face-to-face -face with confidence, impact, or purpose. So what we're going to check is like the most basic that we have to evaluate when we're going to do a presentation or evaluate presentation from other people, okay? First one says ability to analyze an audience effectively and tailor the message accordingly. So Taylor, what is that word? Anybody knows? Yes, you. We use it when uh, tailor made. So exactly. tailor made is yes when you uh, make it, uh, design it according to to the needs of someone. Very good. So when you fit the need of something, so to uh, everything goes very good. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Wendy, could you please help me reading the first part? It's going to be on until the bullet points. Let's see. Okay. Abil ability to analyze an audience effectively, effectively, effectively. and tailor the effectively and tailor the message according accordingly. If you ask most people what makers makes makes a great story, I don't see. <laughs> I, I need glass. All right. <laughs> if you ask, if they, if no, no, you no. ask most most people what makes a great presentation, they will likely comment. Or tang tangible things like structure, con content del delivery in the slide. While these are all crit critical aspects of a great presentation, a more fundament fundamental and crucial part is often overlooked. Understanding your audience. So when you watch people in your organization or or team present, look for clues to see whether they really understand their audience and the particular situation. They are currently in such as is their content time tight tailored and tailored and relevant or just generic of just generic generic is generic is the in information picture at the right level is there a clear what in any in for them? Are they using lang language and terminology that reflect how their audience talk? How the how they address all all the pain points adequately adequately? Is the audience focused in engage or that they seem, seem distracted? Any Perfect. other adjective? Uh, no, that would be, that would be. So, uh, okay. and what did you understand on this one? Um, is, for example, uh, is important to see the audience I understand my 
my speech or my uh, I, I speak at the audience and audience uh, understand me. Okay, so yes, uh, before before you deliver a presentation, that is the verb that we use for uh, presentation, deliver a presentation, um, you need to understand your audience. So that is very, very important, right? Because um, we, we also discussed that before, depending on the public, on the audience that you are going to have, uh, then you will be able to create a very nice material and also present in a very good way. So definitely that is very, very important, okay? And uh, there are questions that we can ask ac according to this one. So, and, and there is something here also that is important. So when you watch people in your organization or team present, look for clues. Do you know what is that word, clues? Yes, something that can you give some orientation. Uh, uh, yeah, close. Pistas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there are some clues sometimes in the behavior of the people. Uh, so you understand before you deliver a presentation what they are like and how you can, can go for it. So that will be it. Okay, so uh, that is very important. And then uh, we can ask ourselves this question. Is their content tight, tailored, and relevant, or just generic? Remember that generic is not good. It has to be tailored. We already discussed about that one. That fits to the needs. And uh, this other word is interesting as well. Tight. What is tight? Fit to, to them, fit to them. Okay. Tight, tight, or just next. I don't hey. know in this context how can I explain? Hey. Yeah, something like that might be. I mean, uh, uh, is there content tight? Means that is specific, right? it's condensed, something like mm. that. Very good. So, tailor and relevant. These three words, I mean, maybe tailor and relevant are the most important. Okay, is is going to be adequate for this audience, and I'm, am I going to present relevant information? So that would be it. Next one says, is the information pitch at the right level? Also very important. I mean, maybe you have very good presentation, but you need to, since you know the audience, you need to pitch. You need to. Uh, come with the message in a very good way, right? Depending on them. Is there a clear what's in it for them? That is a very important one. Whenever you present something to an audience, uh, adults learning is like that. You need to, uh, for example, when you come to the English classes, you think for yourself, what did I learn today? Something I have to learn today, right? Vocabulary, intonation, words, uh, and also if we have fun. So, a question that people, they uh, have whenever they expect uh, to go to a presentation is that, what am I going to learn? Why this is important for me? What, are you, what information you are going to give me that is going to make my life easier, right? So are they using language and terminology that reflects how the audience felt? Definitely. We cannot use slangs, we cannot use uh, terms, that the people, the audience, they don't understand. It has to mirror the level of the audience. How they address all the pain points adequately. Uh, pain points, anybody knows what are, or what is the meaning of pain points? The pain points are the point that's more difficult for the, for the people. Uh, Complicated. Or, or the problem, the means problems, you know, that people need to understand they have problems, you know. Very good. So that is it. Uh, that is a very common, a very common phrase in business. Okay. Uh, somebody can tell you what are the pain points that you are going to achieve uh, if we follow these instructions. 
Oh, okay, so that means that the problems that we're going to solve are. It, the important teacher is not omit, is addressed. Very good. It's different, but it's there are a meetings where omit the pain points, but it's, it's not good because it's necessary to to resolve the conflict. You manage, is... you manage the, the, yeah. Very the good. So that is it, that is it, definitely. So there are, you need to, to know that you're going to have solutions, right? Okay, the other one says, uh, is the audience focused and engaged or do they seem distracted? That is, uh, Depending, that depends on many things. I mean, if you are four hours talking about something, definitely. Even if you do a lot of things, the people they are going to get tired. Uh, depending on the time, for example, if you go to a meeting at 1 p.m. after lunch, that is a very difficult time, right? But, I mean, when you are presenting, you need to you need to handle that kind of situations. And if you see somebody distracted, you need to address that in different ways, with different techniques. Okay. Teacher, one question related to the our presentation. Yeah. Uh, how many minutes is the time assigned for each presentation? Yeah, around six minutes is fine. Six, seven minutes, that will be good enough. Not that much, not that little. Thanks, teacher. It's a pleasure. Good. So uh, let's see, uh, Maybe could you please help me read in the last paragraph too, this one? For your people, getting to know their audience and more importantly, understanding them should always be the first step in pulling together a presentation. Comprehending the challenges, existing knowledge, and level of detail the audience expects lays the foundation of a winning presentation. From there, the content, the content can be structured to get the presenter's message across in the most persuas persuasive way. And the delivery turn to best engage those listening. Good, what did you get from that? Okay. Um, in general, I, I would say that it is the... Uh, know, to get know the, uh, the audience, our audience uh, is more than uh, know them uh, moment moment okay uh, to, to get to know the audience it's more com uh, complex than uh, know them know them we need to uh, understand the the their knowledge and we need to understand which challenge they represent to me and for my presentation and the expect the expectative they have about my presentation. You know, it is more profound, it's more deep, you know? Okay, yes, I know my audience for tomorrow, but maybe I need to know uh, what they expect from me or from my presentation, why, and also the... Um, Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, it is. Um, I I have understood everything, but I don't know how to translate in a in an easier way for you. <laughs> oh, but well, you're doing a very good job. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And you know they they also, uh, they also indicate that our tone in from our voice would be really important 
to engage the listening of my audience. My voice and tone, you know, but, but because in the first video we have seen that they, they have not intonation, they have no contact eye, and I we can be sure that people were not listening to them. You know, if we're by the second video also. Okay, so that is so true. Yeah, the way that you speak, uh, details, uh, and of course, understanding the audience. So you are going to present uh, relevant and other other great information. Good, good. So number two says ability to develop a clear, well structured presentation pitch that is compelling and persuasive. So what is compelling? Anybody knows? have already learned it but we didn't practice <laughs> <laughs> compelling that include uh, include or is resuming with all the points we need to present compelling okay complete complete uh, it's not complete no. but it's something that is like how can I expect that convincing um, is when convincing. It's credible Which, that is compelling Credible, yeah. So it's something oh, that yeah. is this is like a synonym of irresistible. I mean, oh, oh. I mean, you pay attention because you are engaged, you are like, Oh my goodness, this is very good, and you know what is going to happen next, and things like that. So compelling and persuasive, ah, convince, convince. Ah, okay. convince, and persuasive is like that, one, right? So uh, you are going to tell people we need to do this and everybody's going to say yes we're going to do it right so something like that that is the second one and it's going to start helping me on this one let me just check um, Manuel okay please uh, scroll scroll out up Oh, scroll down with the change the letters in bold. Change. Uh, this one. Okay, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Ability mm -hmm. to develop a clear, well-structured presentation, pitch that is compelling and persuasive. Flow and structure are both important elements in a presentation, as both impact the effectiveness of the message. When analyzing this aspect of your people presentation, look for a clear, easy to follow agenda and related narrative, which is logical and persuasive. Things to look for include, did the presentation tell a story with a clear purpose at the start, define chapters throughout and a strong close were transitions moved between the chapters of the presentations were visual eyes handouts or audience involvement techniques used were needed were the challenges solution and potential risk of any argument defined clearly for the audience where the benefits and potential are OI quantified, explained strongly? Did the presentation and with a clear destination call to action or the next steps? Okay, what did you understand on this part? Okay, okay. Uh, I, I understand that uh, this uh, step is for evaluation but uh, in this, this is the 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 opposite for example uh, what is my uh, expectation about my measure message address addresses to the audience uh, as a, a presenter I have to make sure 
about if my points, uh, if my slides, if my topics, uh, the audience was clearly, or if I answer the different question that they asked me. And uh, also be sure about the solutions and risk of any argument. For example, uh, if possible, not that not not all of my audience is uh, uh, if uh, agree agree with my uh, with my opinion but i need i i have to to be sure uh, maybe i i if i convince for the solution uh, this is okay <laughs> very good very good perfect thank you so yes the flow, meaning that the way that you uh, transmit the message is important, and also the structure of the presentation. That is something that we checked uh, yeah. uh, on the videos as well, right? If the structure is not good, I mean, you are lost. You don't know where to start, where to finish. You don't know if the audience, they understood, okay? And uh, yeah, remember that we're looking to get effective. So, when you finish, the people, the audience has to say, yes, that is true. We're going to do that, that you say, right? So that is it. And there are some uh, questions that you can ask as, as well for this kind of thing. So for example, did the presentation tell a story with a clear purpose at the start? Define chapters throughout and a strong close. So that is the structure, right? Meaning that at the beginning, as we say, it's very important, right? You are going to say something that uh, people are, is going to be engaged. And then the rest, the structure of the chapters has to be very, very good. And the closing is also the other part that is very important. So everybody says, yeah, we agree on that one. Okay. The other one says, where transition smooth between the chapters of the presentation. That is also very important. Uh, question for you, what is smooth? Soft. Soft. Right. Yeah. So that's what we're speaking here about flow. I mean, when yes, you change. Tolerance. Exactly. So when you change from one topic to the other one, it has you have to feel that they are linked, that they are together. That is part of the same story, right? That is very, very important. Uh, then it says where it use visual aids, handouts, or audience involvement techniques used where needed. I mean, not only speaking, right? Sometimes you say, look at this picture, look at this video, or I gave you this paper for you to uh, analyze or draw something or write something about that one. So that is also a very important part, okay? And uh, next one is also very important. Where the challenges, solutions, and potential risks of any argument defined clearly for the audience, that is key. Because, I mean, whenever you do a presentation, it's because you want to transmit to deliver information or to try to convince them, right? So you need to, to be ready for objections uh, or to provide the information that is going to uh, make the audience say, yeah, we are ready to do any changes, anything, or new procedure, any new product that we are going to have. And what the benefits and potential are or I quantify, explain thoroughly. Well, this is very specific, right? So this is about um, what is going to be the benefit of this process, of this product. And remember that the ROI is like uh, a percentage of the profit, right? That you are going to have. So if we do this, we're going to increase the profit for 5%, for example, or the sales. So definitely that is something that we really need. Where uh, did the presentation end with a clear destination call to action 
or the next steps. Also, that is very at the end. You uh, everybody has to to be aware what you they have to, or uh, if there is an action plan, what to do, what to follow, who to call. Those things are very very. Uh, questions for everybody: What is risk? Um, when you can obtain a damage. Okay, when there is a possible damage that you can receive about anything, good. Uh, what is handouts? Uh, notes, notes that you have to explain to them. Very good. So handouts says like little things or information that you want to deliver, and you give the papers, the actual papers, the papers. without it, right? Okay. Good. And the final paragraph that is going to be for Maria Elena. Yeah. Here, this part. Uh, is. <laughs> thank you. Okay. For the message to seek and the audience to walk uh, away with relevant information. There are willing or not uh, willing, willing to act. The presentation should flow uh, seamlessly through each part, building moment and interest along the way. If not, the information can lose impact and the presentation is direction, then the audience may not feel equipped in equipment. spirit <laughs> equipment. Equip in spirit or inspired. Compel. Inspired or compel to implement the, the takeaway. Okay, what did you understand on that one? Um, when you uh, stay um, in a presentation, you need that your topic or your message is clear and the people can speak this message and reproduce a part is the the message is a clear have okay. a clear very good so yes so we need to be sure that uh well at the end that everybody understands and that they are ready that everything is clear right that they are ready to move on with uh, what they need to do so that is something very good yeah, Thank you. So the other one says ability to connect with and maintain the engagement of the audience. Again, this is very important, right? So let's see who's going for you here. Edwin Alexander. Good night. Good evening. I'm sorry. Good evening. I, I ability to connect with uh maintain the engagement of the audience. Connecting with your audience and keeping them engaged throughout can really be the difference between a great presentation and one that falls flat. This is this is not easy fit, but is certainly a skill that can be learned. To do it well, your team need a good understanding of your audience, as mentioned about to ensure the con the content is on, on target. Ask yourself, do they cover what re relevant and leave out of what isn't, what isn't? Delivery is important here too. This includes, includes being able to build a natural report with the audience, speaking in a confident conversational tone and using expressive vocal, vocals, body language, and gestures to bring the messages to, to life. On top of this, the slides need to be clear. 
engage engaging and are I interested to to the narrative which leads us to point four. Hey, what did you understand here? Well, from my point of view here, I don't understand much. <laughs> it's because um there's a lot of words here that I don't understand, teacher. Okay, but, so let's check into that. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, let me see. Because in the second paragraph, say the delivery is important here too. I don't know what this trying to mean, teacher, that, that what they mean with delivery. Uh, with delivery, you say? Uh, yes. Okay, delivery is the verb that we use uh, with presentation. We don't say give a presentation. We say delivery oh. a presentation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Okay, so let me tell you about that one. So it's okay, very easy. You. You need mm -hmm. uh, to be able to connect and also to maintain the engagement of the audience. Sometimes that is not easy, right? Uh, because, I mean, you have to be very good, not only in the opening and the closing, but also throughout the presentation. So uh, it can be the difference, it says, between a great presentation and one that falls flat. Sometimes in a little moment, you can lose everything. So you need to go fluent you need to do it well and uh, well. You need to be sure that the content is is what you really want to deliver depending on the audience. It's just like that one. I mean, uh, and how you are going to do that one? Asking the right questions, uh, showing the right figures, uh, the right graphics, uh, make emphasis on what is relevant, things that that one are going to make that the audience is engaged on the whole presentation that you are going to do. Mm, let's check some words. Throughout, what is throughout? Throughout okay. means, huh? uh, throughout meant when you, uh, throw all the, the, the presentation all the time. All the time. From, Very from the beginning to the end. So. Very good. That is it. Throughout is, I mean, all the time on the entire presentation, this situation. Entire. Okay. Very good. Let me see if there is any other. Uh, Teacher, uh, one question. Uh -huh. uh, what In the first part of what they said, uh, the great presentation and one that falls flat. What is trying to me with with this? False, okay. False flat. Okay. When you fall flat is when you are like this. My friends, we're going to speak about something that is very really important because flat. That is flat. No emotion. Uh, straight to the point. No straight to the point. No emotion. Means okay. that you don't feel anything. It's like. Imagine that you're speaking with somebody and they say, uh -huh. I, am, I am very happy because we want to learn English in here. <laughs> and you say, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know. I, I just don't get it. I don't feel anything. So that would ah, be. Okay. All right. That is, Thank you okay. so much. Oh, it's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, let me check if there's any other here. Uh, yeah. We need to use the body language, gestures. Many things can be done. And it says that uh, that leads us to the point number four, which is ability to prepare effective slides that support and strengthen the clarity of the message. So number four, this is going to be four. Let's see who has read. Anna Salmi. What paragraph? Sorry, teacher. Yeah, it's going to be at uh, this one that starts here. The ability to prepare effective slide that support and strengthen the clarity clarity of the message. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, teacher, I need to to zoom. <laughs> Definitely. I understand. I'm sorry. Hmm? 
I'm sorry, I feel. Uh, don't uh, worry, uh, take your time. Uh, We're here. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. One minute, teacher. Take your time, don't worry. I am not able to zoom in here, but anyway, she could do it. It's not uncommon to a slide to be used. Fears and I'm sorry, I don't see teacher. Okay, don't worry. Uh, let's see um, who hasn't read. I assume it's not good in this moment, teacher. Don't worry, I understand. That sometimes that happens, you know. Sorry. Let's see. Carla Vasquez. Hi, teacher. Let me see. Okay. I need to find my glasses, teacher. This one. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Take your time. Yeah. It's not uncommon for a slide to be used first and foremost as visual prompts for the speaker. While they can be used for this purpose, the first priority of a slide or any visual item should always be to add to the audience experience the understanding through effective use of visual data. The main problem we see with people is like is that they are blurred with information, hard to read, distracting, or unclear in the medium. The best slides are visually impactful with graphic, graph, or images instead of line in lines of text or bullet points. They should also be clear in their message and add in for sentiment to the argument or a story that is being shared. How true is this of your people? A slide. Okay, what did you understand here? And I understand that it's very important to support to visual projection because when you projection the information to want to share is more impact with a uh, um, between assistant to the the business meal okay so very true right i guess we discussed that already uh, we need colors we need uh, figures, sometimes we need pictures, sometimes we need videos, depending on, on the audience and the topics. Uh, the visual data is very important because uh, when you speak and you are presenting something, what they will be watching is that. Yeah, they will watch you, but whenever you move the slides, they are going to look at that and then they will understand better what you're saying. So it's going to be like a help, uh, an aid for anything that you are explaining. It's very, very important this part. Uh, yes, what... I, I, I remember that you mentioned it yesterday that a color graphic uh, is very impacting between the system. Very true. So it's definitely something that uh, for the audience is Okay, not only the letters there in front, so, but uh, with a purpose. So even the colors that you are going to use and the way that you are going to use them, they are going to show something. So very interesting. Very important. Teacher, can I read the other paragraph, please? Of course, of course. Okay, so uh, before we move on, what is foremost, anybody? Uh, the most important. Very good. So that is like, what is the relevant part of what we're saying, right? So, and I wrote the word for more, let's check. Blood, what is blood? Too much, too much. Huh? Very good. Excessive, excessive information. Yeah, that is very common, right? That 
people are presenting and they present a lot of things. And even worse, sometimes people, they read that one. So uh, that's not good on presentation. Let's see what else. Um, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, I don't see any other. Okay, uh, number five, ability to appear confident, natural, and in control. Anna san Yes, um, the most people find speaking in front of an audience, both small and large. At least a little confronting. However, for some, the nerves and anxiety, 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 anxiety they feel can distract from their presentation and the impact of their message. If members of your team lack confidence, both in their ideas and in themselves, it will create it. Awareness, awareness, and awareness, under, awareness, and under under my and under my they credible and authority the this can crush a presenter and their reputation this is something that you will very easily easily pick up on but the good news is that is definitely an area that can be improved through training and practice. Giving your team the tools and training, they need to become more confident and influential presenters. Can deliver amazing results in for both the individual and the organization. Good, what do you get from this? That is very important teacher, that the presenters, uh, uh, presenters be confident because is, as you say, is notorious teacher, no, not. Notorious. Notorious, it's notorious when the presenters are not uh, are not confident. Confident is is the perception is is um is notorious. And the good the good point at is possible to improve with training in practice, uh, the, the old people is possible um, to acquire the that specific skill for to be a, a good presenter in practice and training. With practice and training. Great. Very good, so that is it. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, we discussed that uh, also yesterday, right? That we're different. For some people, it's very easy to be in front and speak and and do a very good job when they do that one. For some other people, sometimes we get nervous or uh, we're not confident about the topic that we're presenting. So on those kind of situations, uh, what you need to do is to, to appear, to show us natural and in control. Uh, to find techniques so you can handle the nerves and the anxiety. So there are things that you can do. So whenever you go in front of the people, everything is going to be fine. But it's totally understandable that whenever you are going to be there in front, uh, that, I mean, that you are going to feel kind of nervous. Sure. That is, it, yeah, is, uh, it is, it is uh, like, uh within the poker would you play poker yeah <laughs> yeah the poker face right so <laughs> and, uh, and, uh -huh. 
May I say so in addition, uh, this this was also one of the main problems of uh, in the second video we, we saw before that he was not confident at all. He he seemed uh, he seems too nervous. And that has undermined his authority, you know, with, with, with the audience. Nobody has taken him seriously. Very you true. Yes. Yeah. yeah, actually, that is something that might happen. If you feel that you're not confident, you, your body language sometimes, I mean, if you are doing some things with the hands or your hands are on the, on the pockets, uh, people are going to perceive that one. And then they won't take you serious, as you say. I mean, they're going to say, oh, this person, even if you, when you are saying what you are saying is real and is very important, they they won't give the importance that is it should be done. So definitely to be in control, maybe not that to be that confident, but to be in control is very, very important, right? Uh, let's check some words here. Lack of confidence. What is lack? Not to have. There is not. That is very good. When you don't have any, right? And you. Mm -hmm. Awardness. What is awardness? Like embarrass, embarrassment. Embarrassment. Yeah. Embarrassment. Okay, and then it says and undermine. Destroy it. Very good. Get down. Yeah, so... To it, lose. To lose. To lose. Uh, but undermine the, 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 the credibility and authority means to lose it. Very good. That is it, to lose. To when lose. you don't have credibility anymore and authority. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't think there is any other. No, that is it. Good. Uh, well, this one, rewarding. What is rewarding? Uh, rewarding to reward. <laughs> <laughs> it's like to give something because of because, what you did, right? Yes. Very good. Nice. Number six is the next one. Ability to summarize and close a presentation to achieve the required or desired outcome. Uh, let's see who has some better. Ability to summarize. Uh, Alejandra Michelle, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay, let me just check somebody else. Um, Rosa Elena. Okay. Ability, ability to summarize and close a presentation to achieve the required desired outcome. No matter, no matter how well a presentation goes, the closing statement can still make or break it. It's a good idea to include a recap on the main points as well as a clear call to action which outlines what it's required to achieve the desired outcome. In assessing your people's ability to do this, you can ask the following questions. Did you summarize the key points clearly and concisely? Were the next six steps outlined in a way that seems achieve achievable? What was the feeling in the room at the close? Were people inspired, motivated, convinced? Or were, or were they flat, disinterested, not persuaded? Closing a presentation with a well run overview and achievable action plan should leave the audience with a sense that they have gain something out of the presentation and have all that they need to take the next steps to overcome the problem 
or make something happen. Good, perfect. So, uh, what did you get from this? The close of the presentation. Uh, also, the close of the presentation needs to be clearly. Uh, you can make a recap of the points. Uh, maybe nobody or someone else doesn't pay attention. And when you recap the, the points in the moment, uh, maybe or something is, is missing, it, it's, it's wondering what happened or I don't understand. And yeah, if you make a recap, maybe the point that you you were missing is clear. And and all this, all this, uh, all these things, uh, uh, oh my God, all these things uh, can make uh, that you, you can do this, these questions about yourself. Maybe you are asking, ask, asking for yourself, it, it was it in all clear? Um, it was somebody motivated or convinced and that's the reason because the, the close of the presentation has to be good too very good so thank you and uh, yeah that is it the closing as we learned is one of the most important parts because uh in that way on that part you you are going to touch the people in the way that you want and you can evaluate if they are they were persuaded or if they uh, are convinced on what they have to do. So definitely something very, very important, right? And uh, so first of all, we need to include a recap, a summary on what we have said, okay? And then we can ask ourselves what you say, uh, if everything was clear, if everything was uh, concise, uh, if what we say was achievable, if we listen to the opinions of uh, the audience, um, what was the feeling when they finished? I mean, if they applaud and you can feel very well, right? Uh, or if they say, oh, it was a very good presentation, I didn't know that part or things like that one, right? So that is an evaluation for yourself when you finish stuff. Uh, the closing is the last chance to do something about that. Good. Uh, let's check if there are some words here. What is outlines? Indications, indication. Indication, very good. Call to it. action without lines, that's what is required. Very good. Let's see. This word teacher testing or assess? What? Uh, where is what is that? Here, I decided come in assessing your people's ability. Oh, uh, assess. Evaluate uh, evaluation. Is assess? Uh, yeah, it's assess. like evaluation. Yeah. In assessing your people's ability. The, the pronunciation is assess. Assess, yeah. Well, but I, I just to assess, but I just can't find it. Isn't the first paragraph of that part? Ah, oh, yeah, found no, it. yeah, uh -huh. yeah, in uh -huh. assessing, assessing, yeah, ah, okay, assessing, okay, yeah, it's uh, to deter determine or to impose, and it's to evaluate, to make an official evaluation, something like that, yeah. Determine, I don't determine, see. Determine the importance. Okay. okay. Uh, overcome. Do you know what is to overcome something? To oh, over. Teacher. Conscience. Conscience. Folly. <laughs> mm, Some like that, yeah. Somebody Con was. Uh -huh. To go over. Did they summary uh, the case? 
a point curly and conceal. Curly? <laughs> no, I don't know. To get better. Okay, to get better. Yeah. To yeah, get over. The synonym of this one is uh, that one. Get over. It's when you have a problem and you overcome that problem, right? So uh, you are able to fix it. Let's say to fix or to sit with dealing dealing with it. Very good. Sits willing with dealing with it. Good. What but... is pronunciation? Uh, other. On which one? Uh, consin. <laughs> uh, pronunciation. Uh, is in this paragraph on, in this one? Yes, it's a first. It's a point. It's a point. Uh, in, uh huh. It's a no. Consin. Salino. Ah, uh, concisely. Uh, Concise, go? Concisely. Concisely. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you see a word like this, it's very easy. Uh, this is an adverb. And adverbs, most likely in English, are going to be two parts. The first word and then L-Y. So for you to check the pronunciation, you just uh, delete the L-Y and say the word concise. And then it's concisely. So that will be. So that is like a key for you to do that one. The same happens with other words like achieve. Achieve is this word, and then we have able, achievable, right? Something like that. Okay, no other words here. So effective presentation skills are essential to growth. Uh, Silvia Suleyma, could you please help me reading this? Effective. Presentation skills are essential to growth. It's widely accepted that effective communication is a critical skill in business today. On top of this, if you can develop uh, at them to uh, at them or confident presenters, you and they will experience countless opportunities for growth and success. Once you identify where the skills gaps lie, you can provide direct training to address it. This then creates an ideal environment for collaboration and innovation as each individual is confident to share their ideas. They can also clearly and persuasively share persuasively persuasively share the key messaging of the business on a wider scale and they in the business will experience dramatic results good what did you understand here um, i i need a real real very good teacher because i <laughs> I don't understand very well. Okay, this is very easy. Um, what is telling you this is, uh, it's like the closing of the article, okay? So it's going to be like, if you want to grow within the company, if you want to, uh, to have a better position or uh, many other things, uh, then you need to, you need to have skills when you are presenting. You need to be effective when you are presenting any topic. So this is crucial for a position if you want to, to continue growing or to, to have better businesses, uh, interactions or things like that. So uh, yeah, if we need to, if we need to, or if we want to, uh, to achieve different things, we need to practice how to present. That is very, very important. Let's check some words here. Widely. What is widely? Um, everywhere. It is widely. That's a widely. Very good. So general. 
in general, very good. Let's see what else. Um, countless, what is countless? Without limits. Very good, with no limits, nice. Let's see, what is a gap? Something that you need to fill with new knowledge, man, skills. Perfect. So that is it. A gap is something that is like empty and you need to fill. In fill. this case, with skills or knowledge or uh, practicing or things like that one. Uh, let's see what else. I I, I guess that is it. Okay. So um, let's, let's do a little practice that is a little different. Um, Oh, I got low, load out. Let me just check if I'm able to load. So uh, have you ever seen the chat GPT? Yes, a little bit. Yes, teacher. Now we're gonna practice about that one. So this is chat GPT, this is artificial intelligence. So whenever you need to improve your English or you need to do anything, you can come here and do it. Let's be careful because uh, sometimes it makes mistakes, okay? So for example, I was reading that uh, so a university, they were doing like a comparison, they were testing that one. And they asked ChatGPT uh, people in Australia that they had teachers, professors at the university that they had problems as sexual abusers. And uh, the results was not correct. They was, uh, The results had two or three people that were not implied in any sexual abuse or anything like that. So let's be careful on that one. But in general things uh, like English, yeah, we can practice on that one. So we can ask questions to this. For example, uh, I can ask. Um, yes, teacher in the academy is a big problem because the students, how do you say a private chat teacher is? Take advantage, yeah. They get advantage. Okay. Yeah, you are right. I mean, sometimes, yeah, nowadays it's very easy for for kids to to cheat on their uh, on their homeworks or whatever they want, right? Uh, with these tools that we are having right now, it's going to be more difficult because uh, people yeah. sometimes they they want something that is easy, right? And they just go and look for something, copy paste, and that's it. So yeah, I believe that for schools they need to to do something about it because we need kids that they understand, that they analyze, that they are able to create things. Of course, this is something that they can use like uh, to research in certain ways, but they are the ones who need to create things. So you are so right. So I enter a question there. How can I get very good at presenting? So if I get that one, you can see that it is going to tell me Something here it goes. Okay. And uh, look, so it's going to provide you information in this case. To become very good at presenting, you can follow these tips and strategies. Prepare and practice. And then the explanation of that one. Know your audience. That is exactly what we were saying, right? Tell a compelling story. Also, we checked that if you say a story, it's a very good thing. Uh, engage with visuals. We also learned that uh, if the presentation has colors and very nice things, people will be engaged. Use effective body language. Definitely they're going to tell you, I mean, uh, that language and the body is going to be important. Master your voice. So the pitch, the one that also we discussed, that you are going to go up and sometimes down and make the pauses and things like that. Interact with the audience. Ask questions. We also checked on that one, right? 
manage nerves and build confidence. Exactly what we were saying, right? Six for feedback. I mean, ask people. Uh, it's very common that in uh, when you finish the presentation, you present a survey, right? So the audience evaluate the presentation. That is very important. Study and learn from experts. Of course, that's what we do, for example, in, in, in videos or anything like that. And at the end, it says, remember, becoming an excellent presenter takes time and practice. Embrace opportunities to speak in front of an audience. Learn from each experience and continue refining your skills. So as you can see here, you can find almost anything. Almost anything. Almost but anything. That's why it's, it's a very good a very good tool. Uh, I mean that at, at this point, we all are able to identify if something is true or not, right? Or if something we feel that is strange, we can Google it, and then we're going to see anything. And we can ask about anything, I mean. Uh, you can ask, for example, uh, what is a black hole, for example? What is a black hole? And it's going to tell you the answer on that one. The good thing is that you don't have to go and click on every link, right? They give you the information about what is a black hole, when was created, not created, but discovered, uh, that they took a picture, um, how that can change space and time, gravity and everything that we know. I mean, we can ask anything here and it's going to tell you a very accurate, not a hundred percent accurate, but very accurate. So, uh, who wants to make a question here? Anybody wants to ask a question to ChatGPT? Tell me, what do you want me to ask? Maybe, teacher, more than a question. Mm, I'm thinking about this. Yeah. Um, I remember in the university, I learning uh, make manually um, anal I don't know, analysis this, this, this um, from a data uh, manually in your book or in your notebook. Uh, that data for that, and you. Uh, take a graph uh, before and now you uh, making in the computer in Excel and you can obtain the same in uh, time less. I am believe uh, that a computer cell phone is an opportunity and depend on you. You can use for the um, make better your job Oh, oh no! <laughs> oh, for 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 good or for bad, and depend of you. And but it's a good uh, tool. Very good. You have a very good, interesting point. I mean, uh, I believe that this uh, nowadays, right now, everybody uh, is analyzing about this. Right? People are thinking, "Oh my goodness, this is not good." Uh, a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. A lot of people are uh, not going to get what they need or anything like that. And some other people, they think, uh, yeah, this is going to be very good because everything is going to be faster, automated, and you can do lots of things without losing time of researching. So there are different points of view. And what you say is very, very important. That depends on what you do with the, with this tool, right? It's exactly the same as the internet. I mean, you can find crazy things, bad things over the internet, but also you can find very good tools, advices, um, things for you to grow. So exactly the same is going to happen. What do you think is going to happen in the future? Do you really believe that people are going to lose their jobs because artificial intelligence? What is your opinion? Always you need the people um, for operating, for example. <laughs> this, uh, yeah, uh, always need the people. Uh, the difference is for who? 
and how um, a single person, every single person, uh, can change for algo for algo más for algo más. I, se me fue la palabra. For something else. <laughs> for something else. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, I believe that not only the companies are going to need people. I believe that the government they need people to have jobs, right? Because if you don't have a job, you can you don't have money, you cannot buy things, and the economy things is economy. going to suffer, right? But yes, at some point, some people are going to fire. That is for sure in the future. For example, I was reading. I don't know if it was true. I read a piece of paper that in BMW, uh, that is the factory, of course, they fired people, and that there are some robots checking the quality of the painting of the cars. So the robot goes, they check if the painting is perfect. If it's not perfect, they repair that one and that's it. So some people, they were fired already in that one. Mm, well, what is going to happen for the future? We don't know, but we expect we expect that, yes, everything is going to be faster. We expect that uh, it's going to make the life easier. But also we expect that the most of the people are still they will have jobs. Because as I was telling you, the economy is going to suffer. I mean, people, they need peop uh, other people to buy products, right? The companies, they need that we go to the malls and say, here is my money, give me that one, right? But if people, they don't have jobs, I mean, definitely. In my to... opinion, oh, no. teacher, I'm oh, sorry, in my opinion, in my opinion, um, in, in general, the old jobs, old jobs um, have a shame in the process, more efficient because when you support with the automatic tools, uh, the the process is um, speed. It's more speed. It's faster. It's faster. Yes, it's faster. But it's necessary that the the people require the more skills. Different what skills meant. related to the 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 prof the each profession, but it's not the same in that moment. Uh, the in general, a lot of profession are manuals process, but with the when you use the artificial intelligence, the process is different. For example, the accountant. Now, a lot of accountants, we record the transactions, but that, that operation is routine, is not necessarily required a human to record. Ah, but the analyze for the take a decision uh, because the use of the human is not possible to to give a uh, intelligence artificial in my opinion in this moment okay and i i i also think in addition i think the question is if the uh, the human being are going to be able to be competitive with the in uh, artificial intelligence and how can we become competitive you know in front of the new challenges we will have and for me the main question is how we need to prepare us what we need to learn or new knowledge we need new knowledge on if the governments are will be able to give the the, the preparation people need to be uh, in com uh, competitive uh, in front of uh, 
artificial intelligence. You know, we need new careers. We need new universities. We need new um, opportunities to, uh, to learn. So, for example, I am 62 and I don't know a lot about uh, technology, IT, but if I want to be competitive in the short future, I need to go uh, to somewhere and learn, you know? And uh, I think that the main challenge is that we need to be conscious what our kids, uh, the youth need to learn, how they are going to be prepared in a competitive way. Because uh, intelligent, uh, artificial intelligence is a fact, no, it maybe could be. And then it is more, the question is how, for example, uh, I could imagine that every one of the people here in this classroom know chat GPT because it is so in the tendency, but maybe not not all not uh, all our colleagues here uh, are uh, know sufficient about a uh, chat GPT. Then we need to be uh, uh, compelling. We need to be compelling that we need to go. We need to learn something new. Okay, so definitely that is that is correct. Uh, I totally agree on what you say because, I mean. We cannot, uh, I mean, the change is here. This is here already. What we need to do is to learn. How in my career, how in my job, can I use, maybe Excuse not- me, It's raining and I need to close my window. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, we need to know, we need to know um, what, how can we use this? Maybe not only the chat GPT, because there are a lot of tools. For example, for business intelligence nowadays, we have, powerful tools that we can use so we can analyze a lot of data in a very short period of time. Uh, of course, the decision is ours. The machines, yes, they can take decisions, they can make some decisions and they can make some other things. Uh, but I, yeah, I believe that for them to replace totally uh, everything or everything in a job, we, we still have to have more years, maybe not that much. So we have a chance right now, as uh, Maive was saying, a chance to learn. Learn about this, to check what can we do with these tools and then embrace the changes, right? So we need to do that. For example, teacher, um, uh, I um, do um, applicate to uh, for um, meeting teams, uh, you can make a um, resume for the meetings. And for example, if you can stay in the, in the meeting, after you can see all the meeting. And with this, you can catch the, well, when recording, uh, the recording and uh, applicate this tool and make an resume and it do take more time. So that is the idea. Right? The idea there is that you can save time. You can just enter something. Imagine this one. I just entered a question. I need a, a code to embed a map into a website. So I don't have to go and go line by line or look for some, some codes are already there online, but look which one is the best one. So I just go and create this one. I copy this one in my um, in my editor for the website and that's it. I can change some things and I can actually ask a chat GPT to tell me why this is not correct or things like that one. And it's going to save time. So you can move on and do some different things, right? And you can do many things. I mean, uh, let me see. So we can ask about English as well, for example, mine. 
Uh, let's see. And you can ask for tips. You can ask for, I mean, for a practice. You can enter, a, for example, you can enter a paragraph. Is this paragraph correct? And ChatGPT is going to tell you uh, this is not correct. You need to change this. Uh, what is the meaning of this word? Uh, what is the pronunciation of this thing? So we can use it in many ways. So as uh, Maria Elena said before, depends on what we're going to do with this. It's a tool. We need to embrace that one. This is here already. What we're going to do with that? I mean, that depends on everybody. Uh, we know that there will be people that they will use this not for good things. And also we need to be very careful because remember that this is created by a company and this company is going to tell you something. Depends on you if you believe this is true or not, right? Because we need to be careful on that as well. But other than that, yeah, I guess we can do many things with, it, with this. Okay, so that is the tool. If you want to use it or uh, check it out, that is a very good thing. Now, uh, do you have any questions about the class of tonight? No questions. Good. For the yes. moment. Tomorrow is the day. Yeah. Two or three words is the first homework and the presentation. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Uh, remember that it's going to be something very basic. It's just a practice. Okay. And also remember that we're friends. So don't worry about it. Just do your best and we're going to listen to your presentation. So we're going to check the attendance and uh, one one of tonight is for uh, Silvia Soleil. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Presentation. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Okay. Alejandra Michelle Wilson Najera. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Edwin Alexander Ayala Eraso. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Dinares Galdames. Here. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Maybe Coromoto García de Calderón. Manuel Antonio Palma. Present. María Elena Guadalupe Peñate Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Silvia El El Suleima Rodríguez de González. Present. Good. Susana Beatriz Ortiz de Cornejo. Present teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Maribel Zabaleta Ochoa. Present. Good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow. Blessing. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. night. Good night. Hello, how are you? Okay, here are you. Hi. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's nice to be with you tonight. So uh, I guess you have experience with the 101. So let me ask you. The first question is, how do you feel that you are getting at? Do you feel that you are learning, that you are moving on with the classes? Uh Yes, teacher. I think that uh, uh, I like I like that as you you teach the class. Uh, 
but um, um casi todos uh, speak very fast and and I in my case I I it is different and I I stay very um ¿cómo se dice? Uh, estoy pendiente de, de tratar de entender todo, pero um, agarro pocas cosas. Entonces, pero um, sí siento que, que me gusta cómo enseña la clase. Eh, bueno, a excepción de cuando, cuando la compañera no para de hablar y, y pues siento que, que pierdo el hilo del tema y... Y la atención, realmente pierdo la atención de lo que usted está diciendo. Pero en general sí me agrada y es muy diferente a cómo han sido los teachers anteriores. Eh, ah, igual, disculpe que le comente en español, pero no, eh, por, ejem por ejemplo en el anterior, en el, en el nivel anterior, siento que nos retrasamos muchísimo todos porque la teacher, muy buena y todo, pero casi siempre estábamos en en grupos y en los grupos pues no se trabaja realmente, o sea se trabaja dos o tres minutitos y luego pues cada quien se distrae, entonces con usted todo el tiempo es clase clase, clase y eso es muy bueno y lectura y estoy tratando de, de entenderlo y creo que sí, es, me agrada por eso porque entiendo mucho más de, de lo que entendía hace unos meses en, en, en el oído, ¿verdad? Entonces se está desarrollando un poco más, pero todavía me cuesta. Ok, sí, eh, mire, es normal, es normal tener uh, gaps, tener uh, algunos vacíos. Quizá lo que yo le recomiendo mm. es eh, buscar un poco más de vocabulario. Puede hacerlo de muchas maneras. Uh, mm. Usted puede ver videos cortitos, no tan largos, eh, y tratar primero de entender. Lo pone dos, tres veces, y algo que no sea muy complicado, ¿verdad? Algo, algo sencillo. Y luego le pone los captions, los subtítulos en inglés, para que usted vea las palabras que dicen cómo la dice en la pronunciación, y luego puede ir a buscar las palabras nuevas. Ahora, lo interesante del vocabulario es que lo que usted aprenda tiene que tratar de usar. Uh -huh. O sea, aprende una palabra y trate de usar emociones, en párrafos, y así se le va a ir quedando. Entonces, uh, es normal, pues todos tenemos un nivel diferente, ¿verdad? Uh, sí, eso es, sí, es normal. Entonces, eh, pero sí se puede, ¿verdad? Si usted, eh, yo le he escuchado leer y todo y hablar y siento yo que, que está bien eh, sí pues hay que si usted siente que le falta lo que tenemos que hacer es practicar ¿verdad? Uh, igual pues a veces yo pregunto ¿verdad? y, y aunque la, la otra compañera esté hablando usted puede hablar también lo que usted quiera <risa> lo, si usted quiere hablar más que ella nadie le va a decir Entonces, no, es en ese momento en el que uno está como tratando de procesar lo que usted está ah, okay. preguntando, entonces estoy como que, ah, justo ahorita lo tengo, pero cuando ella ya lo dice, entonces ya, como que uno se re, retrocede, por decirlo ah, okay. así, Ajá, entonces, sí, pero sí, sí me agrada la forma en la que usted está enseñando, le soy muy honesta, es muy diferente a lo que hemos eh, trabajado y me, me agrada esta forma, y sí, el, el oído lo, lo siento, siento una diferencia en, en cuanto a poder captar muchas más palabras que antes, entonces eh, estoy escuchando algo, por ejemplo, en, en una canción, etcétera, en inglés y, y cabal se capta un poco más de, de lo que antes, y, pero quizás es lo mismo de que estamos leyendo constantemente, lo estamos escuchando a usted, las palabras, la pronunciación, entonces puede hacer que tal vez mi pronunciación sea un poco más o menos, pero lo que yo siempre he sentido es que no logro captar al 100% con, cuando las otras personas hablan. Ok, perfecto, sí. Bueno, entonces hay que practicar. Eso es, lo que yo le recomiendo es tratar pues, de practicar en la clase, practicar usted también. Igual si usted necesita algo, pues puede chatear conmigo directamente o en el grupo o en la clase. Si tiene preguntas, también las puede hacer y estamos para ayudar. Ok, muchas gracias. Es un gusto. ¿Alguna otra cosa que pueda hacer con usted? No, no, muchas gracias. Perfecto. Entonces, have a good night. See you tomorrow and dream in English. Okay, good night. Good night.